South South leaders have berated President Muhammad Ubari over the dots in the cycle statement made on Arise Television's interview on the southeastern southeast region of the country. Recall that President Buhari, at during interview with Arise TV, described the southeast as dots in the circle while commenting on the oppression of the indigenous people of Biafra. Reacting to the statement, the leaders of the South South in a virtual meeting on Monday disowned President Buhari over IPOP, adding that they did not have any form of discussion or agreement with Mr. President. The leaders further slammed Buhari over his assertion that some South South leaders told him they won't allow Indigo access to the sea in case they have their separate country. In the virtual session organized by Njinji Media in conjunction with Elomba TV and anchored in United Kingdom, the South South leaders present at the conference said that the derogatory statement used against the Igbos shows the mindset of Mr. President against the region. The South South leaders that attended the virtual conference titled Addressing the Dot in Circle in President Buhari's interview, a return to 1966, where Asai Dokubo, Anko Briggs, Dr. Don Pedro Obaseki, Mr. Tony Nandi, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Inyama, Rear Admiral Yanga, retired, among other participants. Opening the stage for discussion on the matter, and Anko Briggs said the statement in the interview was already shown the mindset of the person of the of President Buhari. The Ijo woman said it doesn't matter if the Igbo people or Ijo people or the Ishekiri people are only 10 people or 100,000 people. Referring to them as a dot in the circle shows very clearly the mindset of the person of President Buhari. On the access to the sea, Briggs said, first of all, I don't even recall any access or non-access to the sea during the onslaught of the civil war. It was the federal government that came through the sea and the creeks. So having settled that, there are millions of elders and there are millions of youth in the Niger Delta and there are ethnic nationalities in the Niger Delta that make up the South-South. Separating the IPOP from Igbo people, Briggs affirmed that the ties between the Niger Delta with Igbos remain ever strong. As a South South person, as a daughter of the Ijo ethnic nationality, and as a, as a people that have heritage, blood heritage with the Igbo people and other ethnic nationalities, we have to make it very clear to whoever is listening and to whoever is playing these games that they cannot hit the heads of the ethnic nationalities of the Niger Delta against the ethnic nationalities of Ndibu. We may not agree on things per se, but one thing we do know and have is a common enemy, a common problem, a common crisis, and we do almost have a common desire, which is our collective survivor, she added. Also in his contribution on the issue, the former managing director of Da Communication PLC, Dr. Don Pedro Obaseki, backs Mrs. Briggs' instance that the South South and the South East are united in the struggle for survival against existential threats of the Buhari administration. Obaseki said there are 65 ethnic nationalities as defined by some of our leaders in the entire South South, and the main the man comes on public television and says he speaks to two elders. <laughs> and some youth. It is laughable. What I see in Mr. Buhari or General Buhari is like a rehash of the Amra, Amra B code of law, an eye for an eye. Dr. Baseki noted Mr. President is trying to be clever by half by trying to play the devil's advocate between the South South and the South East. All he said in that interview were lies from the pits of hell. But unfortunately, he has created a lie. He believes the lie. He is living the lie. And all interviews that he has done, he has made it clear that his agenda is simple. A decimation of those he feels are lesser human beings in the country. He has made it clear from his body language, spoken language, and all else that Nigeria is a different country from, with different nations. On his part, Colonel Tony Iyam, retired, stated that Buhari's statement is a threat on becoming of a president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of all Nigerians. He noted that it is an open revelation of an 
unchanging published mindset that was responsible for the 1966 killings of Ndibos in particular and the people of eastern Nigeria in general. Inyam added that Buhari's utterance is enough evidence that can be used in courts such as International Criminal Court ICC, adding that the synergy and alignment between the Igbos and the ethnic nationalities of the Niger Delta cannot be shaken by the mischief of the president. In his submission, the Secretary of Nigeria Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, Tony Nandi, claimed that the president was trying to be mischievous by trying to create suspicion into the minds of the leaders of both regions. Adding, I can confirm from what I know that there is no such promise extracted from anybody. He added, I am happy with what my brother, Don Pedro Obaseki, Ankyo Briggs, Kone Iyam, said. <laughs> well, it's good that uh, you, you guys have come out to uh, separate yourself from Buhari. That is the divide and rule. The man knows what he's doing. Damn statement he made alone is is capable of causing war is the one who is finding the embers of war and i have said it those who are calling for war nigeria in the recent they are the worst causing problem in this country what does it take you know that people are agitating for something because you know that you are doing that wrong thing but you don't want to address it because you know exactly what you are doing you don't want to address that thing and you know that people will continue to say we don't go agree with this kind of antics with this kind of a uh, 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 where you are making things, policies here and there. We don't go agree. We can't open our eyes and they not believe that since you don't go agree or you are not going to agree to what we are doing, that means we are looking for war. They want to force it down the throat, throat of everybody just like it's forcing Fulani, Fulani or whatever, Katuriri, as to make it as a national thing. And that is what everybody is discussing. And these guys are killing people. Buari does not care about those who are dying, those who are being killed. He does not care. He, does, he doesn't talk about it. The Northerners do not talk about it. But when it comes to when people want to criticize them or to, to fight back, they begin to come and be quoting stinking constitution that even people are even complaining about. And some people will tell you that uh, it is not easy to change constitution. All of you, maybe because it has not hit you directly. If it has hit you, all this problem, and I believe that a lot of people who are still supporting all this nonsense because it shows that you are insensitive. You don't wait until something happens to you before you have experience or know what people are thinking about. If you love other people, you love yourself, you put yourself in the position of people who are talking. What are these people talking about? Let's not even look at what they are talking about, what they are asking for, what they are complaining about. Are they valid? Are they legitimate? They know they are legitimate, but because of selfishness, in as much it's not affecting me. So I don't even care. The statement made by Buhari alone, made by the AGF, Malami alone, the statement coming out from the presidency alone, is enough. It is clear. And I have said it. There's no need for anybody to say, oh, we want to hear from Buhari. He has made it clear. That is his mindset. He, at this hour, this sixth a year in the administration and he still has that mindset what else do you want to be hearing from him again that is what has been in his mind right from the beginning because you know me i've been quoting the south south people that he said they have assured him that these people will have nowhere to go and that is a subtle way of causing creating enmity amongst the people but it's a good thing that they have come out to say nothing of such and again if he said two people have come to meet with him that how does that translate to the whole region that the, the, the whole region has agreed to you? Yes, they might have a, their differences. That does not mean that they are not well knitted together. They are together, close knitted together. So what are we talking about? This is to tell you the mindset of these people. When you see a youth talking, talking here and there, no, they are not just talking. They have seen things, but just that those who are economical with the truth, they will not want to say it the way it should be because of a whatever reasons or sentiment they are they are attached with but you know the youth they don't care they will say the way it is and you say oh they don't they are not diplomatic oh the statement they are making the same man that went to commit blunder on twitter they removed him and he's using that one to rob everybody somebody that cannot do his tongue somebody that the wisdom is not even there to even talk and you wonder so why no wonder some people will tell you that the evil fools grow old because we know that once people are growing old they tend to be more wise they tend to be more reserved they tend to be more accommodating but it's unfortunate with what we are seeing among nigerian elders that call themselves elders and they will say the youth most of the youth are even more sensible than majority of them and they will be telling you that uh, the youth are not respectful they can't call they can't call uh, northerners with the way they are calling their northern people because those ones 
anywhere belief is and once they begin to see a superior argument that those who are going to challenge challenging them they will they will turn it to insult so guys uh, let's hear your opinion and have your take on this thank you